I don't know if you remember the general consensus of the Switch before it came out. You had people on one side saying it was the natural evolution of gaming to have a powerful, portable console that could be played on a TV. And then you had the naysayers, the people who thought it was just a gimmick. Nintendo isn't going to get anywhere with such a weak console. They need to be directly competing against the likes of Sony and Microsoft. Now, we're already six months into the Switch's life cycle. How has it held up? And is it the gimmick that people thought it was? The biggest concern most people had were the lack of games and the overall weakness of the console. A three hour battery life? Poor! If your concern is that there's not enough games, then you're probably not looking for the right ones. You probably want the big cross-platform titles like Call of Duty, Assassin's Creed, or Grand Theft Auto. If those are the types of games you're looking for, then the Switch just isn't for you. You're gonna need a PS4 or an Xbox One for those. I think that eventually the Switch will see some multi-platform games in the same way that the original Wii did because of the sheer success of the console, but they will be dumbed down, less detailed versions. Ultimately, I don't think the Switch is a good home for games like this. When the Switch first came out, the library was lacking. To this day, I still hear people saying this, but already six months in, it does have a ton of great stuff. Zelda, Minecraft, Mario Kart 8, Splatoon 2, Mario and rabbits, Super Bomberman R, and those are just the full retail games. Look beyond those at the smaller downloadable stuff and you have great things like Sonic Mania, which I'm having a ton of fun with. There's Mighty Gun Vault Burst, Severed. Let's see what I have on mine. Snipper Clips, which is fun if you have friends, which I don't, that's why you only see the demo here. The best game ever, obviously. Mr. Shifty, Ocean Horn, don't play this one. Mario Kart 8, even better if you have friends. Zelda is probably the quintessential Switch game. I really, really love Splatoon 2. Phantom Trigger, which looks cool. I really liked Hyper Light Drifter, and this looks similar, but admittedly, I haven't played it yet. Sonic Mania, probably my most beloved purchase. And of course, Azure Striker Gun Vault Striker Pack, which I just bought because I forgot it came out until I wrote this video. So right there, that's a lot of games, especially for a brand new console. I remember for the first few months that the PS4 was out, all I had was Rezogun, Battlefield 1, and Assassin's Creed Black Flag. So you have to give Nintendo some credit. They laid it on pretty thick with the games, and a lot of them are Nintendo-developed first-party titles. They've been hard at work over there. Most of the people I know use the Switch mostly in portable mode. Understandably so, the Switch is awesome that way. We've never had so much power packed into such a small device with controllers attached. The convenience trumps a lot of the negatives. Its three-hour battery life has never really affected me. I recall one time having to use my portable battery on a plane to squeeze out some extra life while playing Zelda. The USB Type-C charge port on the bottom makes it very easy to charge with peripherals you might already have laying around, like a battery bank for your phone or tablet or whatever. But a three hour portable play session is pretty long if you ask me. Don't forget, you're holding a substantially hefty device in your hand. The problem is when you don't have access to a charger between play sessions. This three hour battery life doesn't apply to games like Sonic Mania where the graphics aren't too power hungry. You get around five hours for a game like that. The Joy-Cons are designed to be used by two players for a lot of games if you don't mind the tiny controls. This makes the Switch a great console to just whip out when you're with your friends. This is something that I honestly haven't done too much. The concept is awesome, but usually actual human conversation is entertaining enough. Well, really, if I'm going to be playing my Switch around other people, it's because they're also playing their Switch. Having a portable device with LAN capabilities is amazing. You're just seconds away from a LAN party at all times. But docked mode should not be ignored. I have a pretty great gaming monitor, and even though it's 4K and the Switch is not, the Switch looks absolutely stunning on it. People say colors get skewed in docked mode, even if you change the RGB range to full. But that hasn't affected me because this is an IPS panel and the colors are amazing. Grab that Pro Controller and this is the ideal way to play for me. I'd consider the Pro Controller a must have if you're ever going to dock your Switch. It's that much better with pretty much every game I own. Every game benefits from the enlarged face buttons. 2D games benefit from the D-pad. 
and Splatoon benefits from having a MIDI controller for tracking motion. Another huge concern for potential buyers was the availability of the Switch. It was really hard to find when it first came out unless you pre-ordered it. But just this past weekend, when I was out creeping around for Star Wars toys, I found Switches at Walmart, Target, and Toys R Us. I think it's safe to say that the supply shortage is over, but nobody's gonna commend Nintendo for that, only bitch when stock is low. The Switch has been selling like crazy. It's up to over 5 million units by this point. For just its first six months, that's pretty unreal considering that the Wii U only sold 13.5 million units in its entire lifespan, making it Nintendo's worst selling console of all time. Nintendo was struggling pretty hard to keep up demand for the Switch. They weren't expecting it to do this good. I think they've finally been able to stock shelves and just in time for the holiday rush. Nintendo's online features have always been lacking. The Switch is a step forward for Nintendo, but they've always been about four steps behind. Right now, there's just no voice chat on the console. It's capable of it. It just doesn't allow for it for some stupid reason. You need this terrible app. This app is also used for lobbying in Splatoon 2. It's all really very annoying. Also, for some reason, you cannot transfer saves or games between memory cards or between consoles. So let's say I take this switch right here and break it over my kneecap. That's it. There goes all my saves, even though they're right here on the memory card. I'm really, really hoping that early next year, Nintendo's online features will be beefed up with the launch of their online service. It will be $20 a year and come with a free classic game every month. This fee will be required to play games online from that point forward. This is vastly cheaper than other home console online services, but probably much less feature packed. I am hoping that the launch for this online service will come with some updates for the account system and some fixes for how saved games work. And we're still waiting for that virtual console, which will open the Switch up to a huge swath of Nintendo's awesome back catalog. Another weird sort of problem that I've talked about is that the Switch's dock has a USB 3.0 port and the Switch still does not support USB 3.0. It will eventually be updated to support 3.0, but we're still waiting for that update. So for now, if you have a USB 3.0 network adapter like I do, your Wi-Fi might be faster. The Wii U's poor sales scared a lot of third-party developers away. The Switch is restoring their faith. Ubisoft went all in on the Switch gamble with Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. I think a lot of other big developers and publishers are going to start seeing the value in the Switch. In the coming year, we'll see some ports and some new third-party releases make their way to the Switch. I wouldn't be surprised to see next year's Call of Duty on there. We're already getting a port of Rocket League and Stardew Valley. Of course, the big release we still have yet to receive is Super Mario Odyssey at the end of October. This will undoubtedly move units for the holidays. The Switch is already a big success for Nintendo. It was Nintendo's fastest selling console for a time. No, I don't think it's a gimmick. A gimmick would imply that its flagship feature isn't practical. That its hybrid portability is just an advertising ploy. It's not. Nintendo did the right thing doubling down on its games and its portable market. Being able to stop your game, put the console to sleep no matter your progress, and take it with you is an amazing feeling. So much so that I want all of my games to be this portable. You can't take your PS4 to the bathroom with you. Unless you have your Vita and you have the remote place set up and it's remoting into it and it's not the same and it's not as good. It's good, it's not as good. I haven't even turned on my PS4 since I bought my Switch. Once to play the Destiny beta. That reminds me, I definitely missed a lot of PS4 games because of this thing. And I think I might want to talk about that in the next week or so, so subscribe to see that. So what do you guys think about the Switch? How have you been enjoying it? or what's stopping you from getting one. Leave it in the comments below. And if you like this video, that's not, that's the wrong, that's shoddy cast. Leave it in the comments below, add me on Twitter. All this other social media garbage. New videos every single Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Wednesday nights is Wolf Den Live. Join us for our live podcast and we will talk to each other. And that camera's battery just died. So you can click here to see my last video. You can click here to see the ways you can make the most out of your Nintendo Switch. New game videos every Tuesday. Subscribe for that. Thank you guys, right? Have a good week.